So we've been working on various aspects of our site which have focused on the products and um, the usability of the site and such, but let's look at uh, now the visuals a bit of the site because we can easily switch between one design into another design changing themes sure but even if you spend all day looking for a great theme and activate it someone else might have the same theme and maybe your theme has a few customization options you've always got some way to customize but so does everyone else and maybe the theme gives you a set of seven colors well if the theme is a popular one your theme could look very similar, if not exactly the same, as someone else's site. You may or may not care about that. But most of the time, clients do care that their site doesn't look like their competition. They don't want to get confused for it. So WordPress does allow us to edit things beyond what was originally intended, and we're able to do so. It's open source software, which basically means the code, the source of the site, is open. There we, therefore, we can edit it and such. Because everything that we're using, for example, you know, uh, Windows itself, or if you use iTunes or all of that, the source code is not open. Apple doesn't want you to, uh, you know, view the code of iTunes and edit the code of iTunes. Uh, Microsoft doesn't want you to edit the code, uh, the source of Word, etc. But software like WordPress is open source. Your, your source code can be viewed and edited, and that's what we're about to do. Let's go back to the dashboard, and it's here in one of the hidden parts of WordPress, but it's one of the most powerful parts, because when you hover over Appearance, what you will get is the editor. So let's check that out. If you click on Editor, you will see then the curtain is pulled, and then a wall of code. All of this code is what makes up WordPress. Actually, this is one of the pieces that makes up all of WordPress. Because you see here, templates, 404 template, comments, what else is there, footer, header, etc. These are all the pieces of this theme, and notice on the top right it says, select the theme to edit, 2015. So these are the pieces of the, of the, the whole of your site. 2015, the visual part of it at least, the, the design of it. And honestly, this is hard. This is complicated. Um, well, maybe I should say it's complicated, not hard. Once you understand that what you're looking at, it might not be so hard, but it's still going to be complicated. Because uh, a modern site like WordPress is a bunch of pieces of a puzzle. And we can see that very evidently here. I'm in the 2015 theme and I'm editing something called the style sheet, style.css. And over here I can edit the 404 template, which is 404.php. I can edit the comments screen, which is comments.php. So right there it's actually two different languages that are explicitly mentioned, CSS and PHP. And it might not be fully obvious, but in other parts of the screen, let's say you click on footer on the right side if you click on footer the screen changes to show you the code you're editing the 2015 footer file footer PHP in here it's also got code that is HTML so I want to make a, a note here if you're gonna get into complex WordPress so the skills necessary or complex WordPress um, ability. You need to know HTML, CSS, um, JavaScript, PHP. Those are four huge languages. You can teach, you know, uh, a complete semester long on each of these and that's still much more to learn HTML if you want to know is hypertext markup language that's basically the structure and content of a site the structure would be 
like in general terms. I've got this document here, and the structure is that I've got a top area where I've got some information, I've got a central area, and I've got a side area, I've got columns and so forth. The structure. The content also. I've got this name of the class here, and I've got this add code there. So in a sense, there's the structure, there's the content. That's the HTML of this document. In our site, it would be, well, we've got a sidebar on the edge, and we've got a central column that's defined by HTML. We've got uh, that text at the bottom that says proudly powered by WordPress, that's the content. We've got the content that we've created in those products and prices and so forth. We didn't write HTML code, but it did it for us. That's one of the pieces of, that makes up modern WordPress, modern websites in general, HTML. The other piece is CSS, which is cascading style sheets. That's basically design. What's the color of the text? What's the size of the text? What's the alignment of the picture? Does the picture have a drop shadow? Does it have rounded corners? Design-wise, design can exist without content, um, and vice versa. You can create content without style. I can have a very plain-looking site devoid of CSS, sure. I can write CSS code that would be applicable to text but I don't have to attach it to a site, to my site, I can attach it to any other site. Usually they work in tandem, of course. You need the HTML and the CSS together in order for it to uh, fully function. Complete package. JavaScript doesn't stand for anything, it's JavaScript, but I'm going to say here, and it sometimes comes up, this is not the same as Java. There's a programming language called Java, and there's a programming language called JavaScript, and they are different. Unfortunately, um, if you if you um, if you know Java, you don't really know JavaScript. The code is different, but the point of JavaScript is for interactivity. Interactivity. You click a button, and it calculates the sales tax. You drag something elsewhere to make a new configuration, that's JavaScript, the drag effect. There is a test, perhaps you're selling educational materials, and at the end of the course there is a timed quiz. That could be JavaScript. The JavaScript timer function is counting down till you run out of time, and then it adds up your scores, and then it tells you you passed. JavaScript, interactivity. So structure, design, interactivity. Those are the big pieces of modern websites. And actually then, there's also PHP, which technically doesn't stand for anything. Um, one, one, uh, one acronym that it stands for uh, is um, PHP. Um, oh, it's stand because this is a joke. Programmers are funny sometimes. It stands for PHP stands for PHP um, hypertext preprocessor. Pre preprocessor. So PHP is in the word PHP, and that's funny to computer nerds. So it doesn't really stand for anything, but the point of that is that it is a um, um, what's one way to call it? Uh, well, server side scripting. What does that mean? Well, oftentimes when we talk about PHP, we also have to talk about MySQL, which is my structured query language. Now, all I want to know is how to change. Um, all I want to know is how to change the text at the bottom so it no longer says powered by WordPress. I wanted to say copyright Victor. That's all I want to know. So really, the only thing we would need to know in this case would be the HTML. As I just wrote here, my MySQL, MySQL is a database or the database. It's the database. Um, it's the database component of it all.
everything is being saved to the database via PHP. It's kind of complicated, of course, but HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is what people see when the JavaScript does something interactive and then kind of talks to PHP, then PHP talks to the database. So if you want to get really good at WordPress, knowing all of these languages, you would be a pro. That's obviously a lot to learn. For most normal people, we're really going to deal most of the time with HTML and CSS. Usually, most of the time of that, CSS. CSS, because I want to learn how to change that color or that table is too big, or that text is not high enough. That is usually CSS, the design of things. But it doesn't hurt to also know HTML. So if you know HTML and CSS, you're going to do very well in um, WordPress. Does anyone have any experience in HTML? No one? Any experience in CSS? In JavaScript? PHP, MySQL? No problem, because there's this website where you can learn all of those languages for free at your own time. And the website is called oops, the website is called w3schools.com. At w3schools.com, you can spend your time to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, MySQL, all of these web languages for free on your own time. You go through the lessons, and then at the end, there's a quiz. You pass the quizzes, and then you get a certificate. So if you're trying to get a job as a web designer, it'd be nice to know these things and to put on your resume that you have these experiences, and you get this legitimate certificate from W3Schools for free. We offer a variety of classes here as well in all of these languages. Software like WordPress and Weebly and Wix and Dreamweaver and all of that is supposed to be there to shield us from the code. And it works really well. You can create great websites in Dreamweaver and WordPress, in Wix and Squarespace, etc. And there's always a new one coming out all the time. But the problem with any of that software is, to a degree, it can be training wheels. And I've got this idea for a great website, and my training wheels are not allowing me to do something simple like, how do I remove that? There's no button anywhere in the WordPress interface that lets me change that except if I go to the code. And that's why it's still valuable to have some experience with code, even if you're going to use this modern software that'll do 98% of it for you. Because that 2% is code. It's a big endeavor. Free online classes, free classes here as well. So you can go to all of these languages and learn. But let's uh, apply a little of, of that here. In our editor, we have several pieces we can edit of the site. From the templates on the right side, the way WordPress works is there is a footer. Click on footer. There is a file that contains everything that goes in the footer, which is everything on the bottom of the page. So find it on the right side and click footer. And this works on templates, in that if we edit something in a template, it then applies to all pages. So if I edit something on this footer, it'll change on the home page, and the about page, and the shop page, and every product page throughout the whole site. If you click on footer, you'll see that the code loads up here. I see something that clearly says PHP. The template for displaying the footer contains the closing of the site content div, I don't know what that is, and all the content after, and then a bunch of codes that I don't understand. This is a whole complete language, a programming language, HTML, PHP, CSS, JavaScript, all of those are complete things that can you, you can teach a whole semester or more just on the one language. But HTML is pretty cool because once you get the hang of it, it makes sense what you're looking at. If we browse around this code, you're going to see a line that starts off that says footer. You see the little less than symbol, remember math, one less than two. But in HTML code, that little less than symbol is very important because it's marking that there's code here. And do you see that on this line, there's the less than, a bunch of words that make sense, and then at the end, the greater than. 
That is one HTML tag. HTML is all about tags. You're tagging things in the document. In the real world, this document right here, there's a tag. This is tagged as the logo right here. This is tagged as a row where my name is at. There's a tag where there's a column here, and there's a tag where there's a cell here. So HTML is all about tags to define the structure of a document. If you look at my handouts that I give you, those can be defined that way too. There's an element that's tagged to have big text, and there's an element that's tagged to have bullet points. There's an HTML tag that is footer. The footer starts here. And most HTML tags have a pair. Because if then you look toward the bottom, you will see footer again, but you will see slash footer. So between footer and slash footer, all of the code there, that's what's at the bottom of my page in the footer. So most of the time, HTML has a pair. It starts somewhere and it ends somewhere with a bunch of stuff in between. But then if you browse around between the footer, you're going to see something that says div. And then if you have an eagle eye, you will also see slash div right there. That's a pair as well. Div is a division. The footer then is divided into this section. You can have many divisions, many sections, subsections. So in here I see a lot of gibberish as well. I don't know what that asterisk means, and I don't know what this and that means, but I can read something. Proudly powered by WordPress. So you are going to see code that requires your, the knowledge and your headspace of memorization, a little bit of rote, but then the concept of it, there will still be human readable stuff, of course, So there seems to be a line here. That's where I would change proudly powered by gibberish, gibberish, WordPress. If I wanted to say proudly powered by Victor, logically, perhaps, I can change the word WordPress to Victor. Let's try this just to see how this works. Find in your code somewhere here. The numbers are not lined, unfortunately. If you're a real code editor, you're going to have lines on the edge. But find a line that says proudly powered by S. Skip a little, and then I see apostrophe, apostrophe, and in between the apostrophes, it's WordPress. Put your name there. You put your name, first name, last name. You can put, you know, numbers, whatever. I'm going to put Victor Campos. Proudly powered by Victor Campos. Don't disturb anything else, because when you deal with most code, HTML, for example, if you if you mistype one character, it could break the whole site. And I said character, not command, not line. I said character. If you mistype, if I delete that apostrophe right there, that could break my whole site. That's why HTML for beginners is pretty scary. Because there's so many codes, what do they do? If I'm working on a real live site, right now is like popping the hood of my car and getting into the engine. How many of you are comfortable opening the hood of your car and playing around in the engine? That's what we're doing when we go into the editor in WordPress. The worst case scenario is we've got this test site in WAMP and it breaks. Okay, it doesn't work anymore. I don't know what I did. I've got Duplicator to bring it back. In the real site on the real internet, victor.com, same thing could happen. I could break my whole site editing it in this screen, but I've got a Duplicator backup. Again, hopefully you're seeing the importance of the Duplicator backup or any backup solution. Follow my link to get it cheaper. But in order for us to see what happened, you make a change here, you click update file, and then visit site. If that worked, you'll see at the bottom, proudly powered by Victor Campos. There was no button in the dashboard that lets us do that, but if you know where to go in the code, you can do anything. Did that work for everyone? Did anyone get a broken site? Yeah. Now, technically, if you hover your mouse over it, it's still going to go to wordpress.org. We missed something. So sometimes it's straightforward edits, sometimes it's a little bit more edits. 
Let's go back to the editor and see if we can figure that out. Why is it still going to WordPress.org instead of Victor.com? So let's go back to the dashboard. We'll back, go back under Appearance, Editor. You automatically, WordPress always automatically, when you go to the editor, takes us to the CSS file, the one to change the colors and all of that stuff. We needed to edit the structure, the content, which was where? Not in the CSS file, but where? In the footer file. That was at the foot of the document. So we'll go back to edit the footer.php file. So I'm going to browse around this code. I'm reading around here. Let's see. Proudly powered by Victor Campos. Hmm. Can anyone possibly see anywhere that might solve my issue? It's going to the wrong website. I want it to go to victor.com. Browse around here. Yes. Where's the end? It says DIE and site. Possibly, but uh, that doesn't really say anything about what site to go to. Site footer. Site footer. This one? Well, again, it doesn't say where it's going. It's going to WordPress.org. That doesn't say anything really about where it's going. You're getting closer. Do a search for HREF. If you know what an HREF is, sure. But if you look around here, you're going to see https wordpress.org. There's a web address right there. So right above where I wrote Victor Campos is the web address where it's going to. Maybe it doesn't make sense why, but it's hopefully making sense what it's doing. It used to say WordPress there. Now it says my name. It currently says wordpress.org here between the apostrophes. You see also there were apostrophes between my name. There's also apostrophes around other things. What if I don't want it to say proudly powered by WordPress? I could say made by, maybe edited in there. But before that, we've got this website address going to wordpress.org. Between those apostrophes, I'm going to delete. I'm going to delete that address. It's the wrong address. Between the apostrophes, see that? I deleted between the apostrophes. And then I'm going to add it instead, HTTP. I, ha I should put the full address. HTTP colon slash slash www.victorsbakery.com or whatever you want. So now that address obviously doesn't exist, so it won't work if we click on it. But if you want to put a real address, put Google or whatever, put any other real web address just to fully test it. Within those apostrophes, then there's a comma and other stuff. Between those apostrophes, I put in a new web address, and somehow that web address gets attached to my name there. When I save it and visit site, it will no longer go to WordPress.org. It'll go to the address that I specified. Try that. Put some web address and um, save it and then visit site. See what it looks like. Remember to, to update file, I mean, and then visit site. Which we should still say proudly powered by Victor Campos or whatever you wrote. If I hover my mouse over it, it tells me this is about to go to www.victorsbakery. If I click on it, it'll go to a broken link because Victor's Bakery doesn't exist. But if you put in your own real website, oh, we went over to jiffyname.com, domain name consultants. Question. An easier way as well when we are on whether it's a menu item or something else to click on it or just see quickly what type of um, WordPress style sheet is covering that aspect or what type. Um, the there is. is, yes. We're, we're going to see that right after we kind of feel our way in the dark for a moment and then we're going to see how, how 
how we can do that. So this can be pretty powerful. We'll do one more thing here, and then we'll um, and we'll go on. Um, what we did was we edited some HTML. We edited the we edited the uh, the the structure slash content HTML. Let's see about putting a little bit of CSS code. CSS is about the design of things, the color and stuff. So um, I didn't try this before we we tried it today. So let's see how it works. Um, we're gonna we're gonna write some CSS code, which has its own history and syntax and usage and such, and different commands, because it has a different it has a different um, purpose. It's for design. So let's see. We'll back up. There's um, there is a um, there's a part that says div. If you back up, there's div class site info. It's right above question PHP and after footer. Everyone should see div class site info. We're going to change the color down here. The way we do it is let's click, let's put our mouse cursor um, right before that greater than, right before that angle bracket. There's a quote, and then I put my cursor there, and then greater than. Put your cursor right between the, the quote and the greater than, and then press space. So now there's an empty space here. I'm going to add a little bit more. Into this div, we've already added a code called class. We're going to add another code called style. So make sure you're you're to the left of the angle bracket. If you're outside over here, it won't work. You have to be inside of it right here. And I added a space, so it's not right next to the quote. It's space right there. We'll type style equal symbol quote, so that's the double little quote mark, space quote. We're seeing something equals something. Something equals something, something equals something, something equals something, something equals something. That's what's known as syntax. What's the way that something is supposed to look like or supposed to work, like the English English language? You know, how is it that it's a subject object verb? You know, what did we learn a long time ago in school? I went to the store. So that's subject, verb, noun. Well, whatever, whatever we learned. There's a syntax to it. Same thing with the code. There's a syntax here. Something equals something. In that way, style equals quote, end quote. Inside of the quote, so back up your mouse inside of the quote, just like that says class equals style info, class equals site footer, ID equals colophon, role equals content info, style equals something. One of the easiest things that always impresses people to do is, let's type inside of style is background dash, that's a dash, not a slash, color. We're about to change the background color of this div, of this division, of this section of the site. The syntax is what are we affecting and how are we affecting it? So there's a colon right here. What are we affecting? The background color. How are we affecting it? After the colon, add a space and we'll think of a color. Just to be obvious, I want to type pink. And we can have many of these sort of directives, many of these commands. So let's make the background color pink, let's make the text color yellow, let's make the line height 7, whatever. We can have many of these commands. And in order to have more than one command, we separate them at the end right here with a semicolon. Very important, obviously, to be typing the right symbols. Background dash color. This needs a dash or it won't work. Colon. That needs to be a colon. Space. What are we affecting? How are we affecting it? The end. Semicolon. I could then add more commands separated with semicolons. 
colon, semicolon, in st still inside the quotes. Okay, I think this is good here. Check your spelling, background color, it does matter, all of the spelling. If you're used to the British spelling color, I think it still works, but we're not in England. So let's, um, or Canada, let's click update file. Unfortunately, this doesn't tell you if you wrote the code wrong. Unfortunately, the WordPress code editor is terrible. I never write my code here. I copy my code and put it into a civilized code editor where it'll tell me that there's errors. This will tell you no errors, unfortunately. You won't see the result until you then visit site. And if it worked, you should have a nice Pepto-Bismol colored footer. If it didn't work, many things could have gone wrong. Let's take a quick moment. Uh, anyone need a little help? Did you get pink background? Well, maybe pink is not your color. Well, we can do purple. What if we go back to edit, edit that, and change that to purple, or yellow, or red, or green, or fuchsia? There's a bunch of colors, actually, you wouldn't even think of. There's a color called Alice Blue. There's goldenrod. There's bisque. I wonder if it's lobster bisque. There is uh, ivory. I think there's even one called bone white. Even like ghostly white, so these variations of white. If there are two words, they run together. So the syntax of that, good point. The syntax of that is that if there's some sort of color with two words, it just runs together. This one over here, the syntax of more than one word is with a dash. And you just learn these as you learn the language, just like you learn a human language. Alice blue. Not every color exists. If I make up a color such as hot yellow, that probably doesn't exist and it won't do anything. The good news is it won't do anything. The bad news is I don't get my hot yellow color. Hot pink. And I'm going to try Alice blue. Update file. Go visit site. Very subtle. It is visible. It's a blue. If I type blue, it's a pretty, pretty ugly blue. But if I type Alice blue, it's nice and subtle. And you might think of different colors to type there. Well, what colors are valid and what, which colors are not? Guess what? At the W3Schools website, there is a link, References, and you will see under, all right, here, Color Reference. This will give you a list of all the possible colors we have to choose from right here. There's Alice Blue, Antique White, Aqua, Azure, or Azure, uh, Blue Violet, Brown, Burleywood, Chartreuse. I don't even know what that color is or how to spell it, but I see it's a version of green. So over at W3 Schools are a variety of built in colors. What if I want a, a shade of it or to mix it with another color? I can do that. So colors, just like when you go to Home Depot, you're going to paint your, your house, you want a color, and you, and you say, what color do you want? I say, I want blue. Well, which blue? We've got a million of them. Because you can synthesize so many blue colors via a formula. When I talk about the color blue, its formula is this, pound sign 0000, zero, zero, zero F, F. When I talk about brown, I mean pound sign A52A2A. Two A, two A. When I mean... Uh, over here, Alice Blue, I mean pound F0, F8, F8, or FF. And so when I go in here to do any mixing or shades, let's say I want to get a little bit of this color, plus a little bit of this color, <clears throat> and I want the color right here in the middle. <clears throat> well, there's its color. It's not going to be an, a nice, pretty named color. But if I really need that color, it's pound B294FF. So here, when I'm editing it, instead of putting simply background color Alice Blue, if I know my color formula, I put my color formula. I can try that one. 
Don't forget the pound sign B294FF. That's all run together. It's six characters. Those six characters let me mix any color. Like if you take an art class or you go to Home Depot and you're going to mix colors, you're mixing a little bit of different colors together. This is red, green, blue. These first two digits are red, the next are green, the next are blue. And they go on a scale of uh, 0 to 255. Why is there a B in there? Don't worry, it's computer stuff. But if you go over to HTML and W3 schools, you'll learn all of that. That color formula then lets me add a color that doesn't exist as a word, as a simple word. There's only about 114 colors that exist as a word. But there are a billion colors, literally, that you can mix. You just need the right formula. So if I make that change and update the file, check my result, look at that, I get a purple. Out of the hundreds of purples. So this is a big topic. If I had a, for example, a WordPress Part 3 class, we would get into so much detail about editing HTML and CSS because they're so valuable to know. In my company, when we work with a client, we oftentimes start with a template. We sit down with the client and we, and we choose templates with them and then they choose their template and say, okay, I like this, but I want this color and I want this size text and I want this structure, structural changes and such. See, no problem because then we pull back the curtain and work with the code editor and give them a unique thing even though everyone starts off with the same sort of vehicle if you buy the model number the model year you can still customize it they're gonna recommend would you like this color would you like this finish would you like this interior customize it here we're customizing a site via code and it, it, it can be complex it's a whole class in and of itself and what, what we're doing is I'm telling, I'm directing you directly. We're going to go here to make this change. On your own, you wouldn't even know where to begin. Let me give you a starting point. Let's try this. Let's say we go to, um, well, let's make it obvious here. On the home page, I see that there's way too much space between this word and this paragraph. I want to know where do I need to edit to get that a little bit more compact. Most web browsers offer a way to help you deconstruct a website so that you can then make the, ch the appropriate code changes. I'm in Firefox, but you might be in Opera or Internet Explorer or whatever. I'm using the Firefox browser. Nowadays, they all have this feature. Try this. Right-click on the word home. And somewhere near the bottom, you'll have something that says Inspect Element. Any web browser should have this. I'm going to right-click Home, Inspect Element. You'll get this panel that either opens up at the bottom or the right that has the same code we were looking at previously, but a bunch of other little sub-panels and things. As I get more adept with HTML, this will make more sense. Because if I know HTML, this is telling me there's a heading one tag here, inside of a header, inside of an article, inside of the main, inside of a div, which is evident here too. There's a header, a heading one, inside of a header, inside of an article, inside of a main, inside of a div. There's all of this stuff to look at. But then on the right side over here, this is the CSS portion. The HTML portion is here. And then the CSS portion is here. So this CSS here is telling me font size, line height, margin bottom. CSS is all about the design of things, not always just color and such, but other types of, of, of editing. So for example, hopefully you see what I'm seeing here on the right side. If you don't, don't worry about it just yet. But on the right side here, I see something called font size. If I click, this says 3.9 REM. If I click there and change that to, let's say, 5.9, did you see my home text suddenly got bigger? 
if I put in 1.9, it's smaller. If I put 10.9, it's really big. It was originally 3.9. There's line height, margin, bottom. The line height is the distance that the line takes up. How high is it? That could be possibly a clue as to why there's so much space. And this says something about 1.2.38 and margin bottom. The thing about CSS, again, I have to say it's complicated. And I think this is the one, one of the ones I would also see it's hard. Sometimes something can be complicated but not hard. Sometimes can be something can be hard but not complicated. I think CSS is both hard and complicated because in my years of experience, oftentimes there's so many pieces of a puzzle to CSS that I edit something and something else conflicts or something else overrides it. So I'm seeing two possible things that I can change, line height or margin bottom. Which is the right one? I'm not sure. But the good thing is I can make changes here. I can make all of these crazy changes and put 13, and that is not permanent. Anything that we edit in this little inspector is not permanent, because when I refresh my screen, it goes back to normal. Nothing has been edited on a real level, because I can, I can use this element inspector on any website. I can pull up Google's website. I can right-click Time for Cheer, Inspect Element, and make these changes here. Make these changes. Look at that. I changed Google's home page. Does that mean I changed Google's home page for the whole world? Nope. I only changed it from my web browser at this moment, and when I refresh this, it goes away. Like that. So this element inspector that's built into every web browser is like a plain, like a playground, a sandbox for you to experiment with. What's the code that I need to edit to make the change that will customize my site? You actually do make the permanent edits in the WordPress editor. So I'm using this element inspector to figure out perhaps this margin bottom. What if I decrease this down to 1.00? Well, it made it a little smaller. What about a 0 0.5? Well, it brought it even closer. Good. So I'm starting to figure out if I edit something called margin bottom that seems to bring my text closer together. In your style sheet line 5597. You're going to find an entry called entry title. And in there, you're going to find margin bottom, whatever it was. If I change that to 0 0.5, that will change permanently the design of my site. Entry title. In my editor, in my stylesheet file, stylesheet.css. In line 5000, whatever, there's no line numbers. But there was a thing called entry title. Entry title. There's a spot where I can make these changes to these sizes that I was, that I was exploring. So again, this could be pretty complex, and it could be pretty hard. This is really as much as we'll look at, because this obviously is a huge topic in and of itself. We don't have the time. Maybe we don't even want to, to do this. Maybe we'll find the perfect theme, and we'll go over to the Customize button, and it'll customize it really well. But if you always have the nagging feeling, well, there's too much space here, and that text is too big, can I do anything about it? Yes, you can get into the code view, this editor. But that requires knowing a bunch of extra things and not breaking the site. So I'm not going to go really that far into it. We at least edited down here, and 
That's a nice parlor trick, but obviously to really make it do something complex, it's complex. It's best for another class, or to educate yourself on, a, on a, one of these many tutorial websites out there. So again, if we had a third part of this class, we would go into more detail of it, but these classes are based on enrollment. We cannot have a viable class of three people. And so uh, we'll be ending the main lecture at this point, and we've covered a lot. If we think back through all of the time we've been together, either only this month or even back from previous month, if you had no experience in WordPress, that was part one. We got some experience. Part two, we got experience in e-commerce aspects. There's still many things we could still learn, but there's plenty right now that we can play with. And um, then this part about customizing a site is a whole new world with its own uh, challenges and such. So everything that I've that I've taught has been recorded. It's up on the up on my channel. You want the link to that? Remember, you want to go over. You want to send me an email. If I haven't sent you the link to the videos yet, I apologize. I will very soon, or send me another one to remind me. But um, we're coming to the end of the course, and uh, I'm going to do a wrap up. But any questions up to this point about anything? Okay. Well, if we have um, more questions, we'll do lab time.